All right, this one is going to be about compound gear trains, which is very, very similar to our simple gear trains, except this time we have two of our gears on the same axle. Okay, when we actually take a look at this, you see um, our first two gears are in line with each other, right? Oops. <laughs> and then our middle two are connected on the same axle, and then our last two are directly in line. Okay, so when we turn this first one, it directly turns the second, then number two and three are on the same axle, and that third one drives our fourth, okay? So when we actually look at our activity, it asks us to draw out this system, kind of. Um, it's usually easiest if you have that drawn out somewhere. You do not have to if you really don't, if that does not help you. Okay, so what we're gonna start with, we're gonna start with our one. We know that's connected directly to our second one, our larger one. We have our smaller one in the center of this one. And then connected to that one, we have our biggest one. Okay, so these are not perfect, and that's okay. These are just a reference of where these portions are just for you. So this first one is going to be A. Our larger one that it's connected to is B. Our little one in the middle is going to be C. And the largest one that that's connected to is D. So of course yours is probably not going to look exactly the same as this one, and that's perfectly fine. All right, just make sure you're using your numbers for your gears whenever you're doing those. Okay, so for this one, um, remember when we're marking out the numbers for our teeth, um, we know already the number of teeth for each of these. Okay, so for A, B, C, and D, for A, this is our second largest, or second smallest, sorry, which we know is 36 teeth. Um, our B is the next larger, which is 60. Our C is 36. Our D is 84. Okay, so these are the sizes for these gears right here. Remember, you're putting in whatever you have for yours. Okay, so what we'll do for this one, um, we're going to calculate our gear ratio. But since these two are on the same um, axle, we don't have to calculate the ratio between B and C. Okay, since they're going the same speed, they're on the same axle. So we really just need our ratio for B to A, right? And then for D to C. Okay, so if you're using the one that you made, you probably put your B and C on the same axle. So your A and B ratio is the same as before. Your C and D ratio is the same as before. So you could probably just copy those down. You don't have to redo them. They're probably the same thing. Okay, but just in case you forgot, or maybe you moved things around and used different gears, we'll do it again. So remember we have N out divided by N in is our formula. So we're gonna look for our A as our in. So anything further is gonna be our out. So our B is out, which is why it's on top. Our A is in. Okay, so we're gonna say 60 divided by 36. All right, for our D to C, remember D is gonna be out, so we have 84. Our C is in, which was 36. Okay, so remember we want to simplify these. Um, so we say our 60 divided by our 36, which is gonna be 1.66 repeating, so two thirds. One and two thirds. We want our 84 divided by our 36, which is 2.33, repeating, which is one third, two and one third. When we multiply these together, remember we're trying to find our final gear ratio, and we do so by multiplying the two ratios we have. Remember, since these are directly threaded together, that's our ratio. These are on an axle together, so we don't have a ratio. And then C and D are threaded, so we do have a ratio. So we only have two to multiply together. When we multiply both of those, we're going to get something like this, at least for mine. It'll be 3.87 with the 3 repeating, but we'll leave it at two decimal places for now. And so our ratio would be 3.87 to 1. So for every 3.8, so almost every four rotations of this little one, this larger one goes around only once. So if you notice, compared to our simple gear ratio, it might have been maybe two to one, um, or one and a half to one, depending on what gears you used. Um, your compound gear ratio is going to be much larger, um, comparatively usually, or much, much smaller. 
You can make much larger and much smaller U ratios by compounding them like this. All right. When we look at our other compound questions, um, it does ask about the torque, kind of like before. Um, it gives us a in torque and no out torque, just like before. I'm going to show you just how to set it up, and then the rest will be for you. Okay. So if we're taking a look at it, um, we know that um, our n out. Oops, you cannot see that anymore. <laughs> that your n out divided by your n in is equal to your torque out over your torque in. Right? So we know n out and n in. It's saying for a and d, right? So d will be our out. In this case, 84. A is in, so 36. Again, and just in this case, use your own numbers. Torque out, we don't know. Torque in, it says, is 7 foot-pounds. Okay, so this is how you set it up. Remember, you cross-multiply to solve. Okay, so 84 times 7 foot-pounds is equal to our 36 times our torque. Okay, so that should be close enough for you guys to be able to go through this. Um, talk a little bit about the differences between our compound ones and our simple ones. Our questions do ask a little bit about that. So just make sure you take a look, go through these. If you have any questions, as always, just let me know.